to Talking Technique No Trouble. This is Ari with episode 53 and today I will be talking about the whole tone scale. Well, whole tone scale is a very interesting scale. It sounds a little bit eerie, sounds very bright, definitely different than the pentatonic or major minor sounds that we're typically used to. The whole tone scale is a symmetric scale as the name implies. It's built out of all whole steps. Now, if I keep repeating a whole step, I can do that six times until I come back around. Because that scale is built out of all the same distances, so to speak, it does not really have a beginning or an end. For example, right? So it doesn't have any modes. So if I have an A plus, I want to scale, start that scale from A. If I have a B plus, it essentially is the same scale, yeah? it's the exact same scale, but it starts from B. So there are only two um, whole tone scales, if you will. Of course, each of those two scales houses six roots, uh, but the scale itself is the same. So one that starts uh, on, the, on the A, for example, and one that would start a half step below or above, that will give you the same scale. Let's take a look at whole steps real quick. A whole step obviously is on the same string up two frets, can be fingered one, three or two, four, both will come in handy with the scale. And we can also finger a whole step between two strings, of course, and that's four, one. That's where the one finger per fret fingering is really handy. You have that under your belt. And I think there are two nice fingerings for the whole tone scale if you wanna play it in order. And the first one is where you do sort of uh, three plus three plus three plus three. So um, if I start it down here, it's, it's all whole steps, right? And what I'm doing is I go one, two, four, and between one and two, I scoot up by one fret. So one, move up a little bit, two, four, and then one is already right there. So I try to make the move early. Of course, I could do all sorts of combinations of that move, but I wanna do the move early because it gets my hand pointing in the right direction early on, and I like that. So it um, gives me time to think ahead and make my move. So one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, and then you wanna add up the one one more time so that you start with the same root that you started with. When you go back, you can either do this or move with the third finger. So that's really good fingering. Another really good fingering is the two plus, I would say two, three, two fingering, if you will. So two on this string, then three on this one, and then two again here. So this is over one octave. If you wanted to keep going, you would do this, but let's focus for now on all the notes that we can do in this position. So if, you, if, if I include the five string, then we'd have another three down here. So it's always two, three, two, three, right? Two, three, two, three. Now, of course, I can also start that with three, same scale, three, two, three, two, and up to the octave. On the piano, you can see right away how the symmetry of the whole tone scale comes to play. Look at this diagram. You either have three white keys and three black keys, that's a set of six scales, or you have a set of two black keys and four white keys. This scale is symmetric, which means that I can move it if I find something that I like, I can move that little thing up and down by the interval the scale is symmetric in, which is the whole step. I can also move it by multiples of that whole step. So for example, I like this little thing, right? I can move that up by whole steps and I can just keep my fingers do, doing the same thing. So some of the shapes that are interesting are, for example, this business. Minor sevenths that are in there, right? Then another thing that's interesting is this shape, reversible. You can do some fun stuff with that. So. 
So those are some ideas for you. Okay, let's listen to this scale in front of the backdrop of an A augmented triad. A, C sharp, E sharp, if you will. So that's two major thirds stacked on top of each other. That's the chord. Goes with that scale. of those shapes that I was sort of riffing with here in this brief improv. So one idea is popping out these sevenths that you have here, right? So these two sevenths, that sounds pretty hip. And then you can also, of course, take any kind of shape and move it around. So one shape, for example, is what... You know, to me, it looks like the five, the, the, the five dots on a dice. And we just move that around, you know. It's a very different shape for the fingers. We're not really used to, to doing that if we play a lot of pentatonics and major minor uh, system type material, you know. Then obviously you have this diagonal business here that goes this way. But then interestingly enough, if you do it over just three strings, then you have this guy going on, right? So that's... Uh, Again, that that five on a dice is maybe a good image to uh, to keep your place. And you also have this little rhomboid shape here. That's a one, two, one, if you will. That works also. Uh, then you know the triton, of course. So lots and lots of options. If you need some help with the theory, as always, music theory for the bass player has you covered. The Holton scale is in there in the interval chapter where I talk about repeating a major second over and over. So I think it's a great way to get your technique practice in, pop an interesting background track. Uh, in and then improvise using that scale. It forces us to use sequences and shapes that we usually don't have that readily available under our fingers. It sounds great and it's fun. Makes us look at the fretboard in a new way. If you would like to have access to those background tracks, uh, I will make them available to you. Please come on over to arispaceblock.com slash whole tone. arispaceblock.com slash whole tone. One word. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'm logging off. This was Talking Technique and I'll see you next time.